Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lahila Superfina. And I am your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. How's y'all doing? Today, we are going to talk about Tomo-chan is a girl. Why? Because I was reading the manga, and Crunchyroll has showed it this season, and Mikhail has finally watched it. And I say finally because once upon a time, I did recommend Tomochan is a girl to him to read. Uh, yeah, this is true. I had to think about that. Yeah, you did. You told me a long time ago. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get around to it. Never got around to it. Yeah. And I recommended it to you because you were reading a lot of rom-coms and you're reading some that were four panels, short chapters. And I thought of Tomochan is a girl because... They all had short chapters, and it was a rom-com. Let's be honest. I'm not just reading rom-coms. I'm reading smut, too. (laughs) Korean smut. time, you were looking for rom-coms. This is true. This is very true. And I recommended it to you, and you saw how many chapters there were, like 200, and you're like, uh, laters. (laughs) This is true. You know, a complete side note, people, but, like, we're... Using this is the first time we're recording a podcast using this Rodecaster Pro 2. Isn't it interesting how it's only picking up our voices individually from each mic instead of like I'm talking, your meter's not going up, and if you talk. This is legit. I remember we were recording on our separate stations with our own mixers, and it was picking us both up. Yeah. It was rough. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Like, it's auto-leveling. I turned on the uh, road. Um, it's like some interface on it. You turn it on, and it auto-levels. And also does uh, some type of thing to eliminate noise in the background. Dang. And we have, like, a TV on and other noises being made by multiple creatures. Yeah, it's not going to capture any of it. Road. Sponsor us. Seriously. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're here to talk about Tomo-chan is a girl. I'm finally reading it on top of watching it. So three episodes have come out so far, and um, we've watched all three, and I started reading the manga about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and I haven't picked it up back up, but then I haven't really picked up much of our the manga I'm reading. Um just because it's been kind of busy. But the show is so far pretty faithful to the manga. It is, actually. I was really surprised. I was actually surprised by the pacing because I was thinking, there's no way all those chapters can fit in one season. Hey, there's no way. Not to interrupt you, but we're using condenser mics, which means the closer up you get, the more of your will pick up, and this is built to pick up a voice. So you can sit back. You don't have to sit for. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being rude. Super rude. Super anyway. Rude. <laughs> rude. Yeah. So anyway, you're saying. So I was saying that I wasn't sure if all the chapters were going to fit in one season. And I was thinking, oh man, I really hope to make multiple seasons. But then the pacing, like the chapter where Carolyn or Carol, the chapter where Carol gets introduced, which is from like volume three was episode two. Was it? Yeah. Okay. So my episode, what my volumes are a little off because when I, went to start reading it it showed chapter zero and it doesn't give you context as to who these characters are so i treat chapter zero as one and one is two so i count the law off but yes i think she was introduced chapter four five and on the episode the tv show she's introduced in like second episode yeah like there's like a lot more character build up i want to say like the episode where her senpai had the two girls with crushes on him Mm -hmm. and then they went to scout out Tomo and talk to her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Rude! 
You just pushed me. You keep talking into the mic. I'm what like, it? I know it is. <laughs> Rude. Posture check. I trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So that episode, they were kind of like building it up to when Toma was to talk to the two girls. And they kind of gave more scenes to those two girls who start out as extras but they turn out to be more later on yeah that that was one of the things i definitely noticed with like the difference between the anime and the manga is the anime definitely makes it a point to um not leave you questioning too much it's very explain like explanatory whereas like the manga because you're reading panels and not so much as watching something in motion, things will happen. You just got to process the environment plus where the characters are in. Whereas the anime is just like, nope, this is, yeah, th this is how she felt about him. This is what he thought about her. And this is what they were thinking. And it's like, oh, okay. To those of you who aren't familiar with Tomo-chan is a girl. It's about a girl named Tomo. And she she confesses to her crush, Junichiro, who has been a childhood friend. And he totally did not take into consideration what she was confessing and totally friend zoned her. This was a story of a girl who's obviously expressing her love for this guy and this guy who is blatantly being oblivious to it and kind of gives you the suspicion that he's doing it on purpose i didn't get that from the manga i got that from the show from yeah. the show i got it but from the manga i was under fully the impression that he was just dumb oblivious yes 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 that's what i was thinking too in the anime they're making it obvious that he's kind of being ignorant on purpose and I, I get why they, they're doing that because, you know, current generation, short attention span, so it makes sense. But I like guessing, and I feel like they're robbing me of the will, is he, isn't he, will he, won't he? I don't know. That's just me. In the manga, they gave a lot of instances where he accidentally touched, rubbed, or did something to her that was inappropriate, but because he's friend zoned her, trying to think of her as a guy, he doesn't notice it. And in all of these instances, that's where a lot of the humor was. We would see it in the manga. We're like, oh my gosh, did he just touch her boobs? And Tomo, you're like waiting for her to overreact or to be play it cool because she knows they're friends, but she overreacts because she is a girl. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, like her, in many ways, like her reactions to the things that he does is maybe because like we're older in our 30s and we look at it and it's like, oh, yeah, they clearly like each other. Whereas like I could, I could understand in a way, like if I was younger and I was watching this or reading this, I'd be like, is he really interested? Is he not? Is she? Where is the friend? Quite, but like, because I'm older, I can look at it and be like, oh, okay, this is how this is going. But like, I know where the end goal is, and we're already there. We're just watching, or no, that's where we're trying to get, and we're just watching the journey there. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And it's a really nice journey. Like, in the manga you really see tomo trying to portray herself as a girl to showcase to tomo well to herself and to junichiro that she can be feminine yeah and because she questions that oh yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes she what's it called she's self-conscious by her lack of femininity or she's oblivious by how unfeminine she is and so there are chapters throughout the manga where Tomo's really trying. She's making a great effort into showing Junichiro that she is a girl. Please 
pay attention to me, be attracted to me. And she's she's got the features to be very feminine, you know, the top part and the bottom part. She's a curvy person. Yeah, I mean, they, they really go out of their way to showcase that, like, she has a great potential to be very, very feminine. And I also make it a point, because I didn't capture this from the manga in the first couple of chapters in the way that the anime basically spoils it out to you, or spells it out to you, is that she's actually very attractive. Like, she's a very beautiful, she's, a, she's voluptuous, like, she's busty, she's got that muscular, athletic, you know, look, and the, and the manga pretty much doesn't tell you what she's supposed to look like until a couple, like, maybe ten chapters or so in. Yeah, the chapters where uh, her friend, Misuzu, yeah. helps her to look more feminine for these, quote, Date dates quote yeah. where Toma's really trying to make this into a date, but Junichi was like, "Yo, what's up, bro? Let's hang." <laughs> like it's so funny, like how he he's like a foil to everything <laughs> that she tries to do, <laughs> and it's like it is so funny because like the friend and uh, the two friends, the guy Junichiro and um. What's the girl's name again? Misuzu. Misuzu, yeah. So you see how they hate each other? Oh, that's another topic to dive into the two of them. You see how, like, they hate each other, but she's constantly trying to do things to set them up. And every time... Okay, and so technically he's a foil, too. Because every time she does something to get them in a position where they are alone and can confess, either he screws up or she screws up. And they're the foil to the other. Yeah, that was the other humor throughout the story where one of them would mess things up, but it wasn't like forced. It was a very natural thing yeah. because it matched their personalities. Yeah. For example, let's just say this Tomo can be awkward, she can be socially awkward. And she's very used to straightforward, rough around the edges kind of thing. But when it comes to being, what's it called, strategic with her words, <laughs> it's a little hard for her. While Junichiro, he's really straightforward, but he can be a little sneaky too. Yeah. Yeah. And with, with the way the susu is. This is just, just like, oh my god, she's got such a like bitchy. She's that cynical friend that we all love. Every friendly anime has that one friend, that one companion that's a little cynical, but is like your diehard companion. I mean, I get that. Yes, we all have had that friend before, but it's like, like okay, the okay, because I read, I watched the show before I read the manga. My first impression of her was that she was going to turn on Tomo. She completely gave me that, you know, like you know the dynamic of the the aloof friend and the conniving one, yeah. and the conniving one is always like, uh, what is it, Orosike. Kind of like that that show. Okay. <laughs> the way the friend, like, turned on him. But, like, I, I yeah, I was like, is she going to steal Janisha? Like, I, and then, then come to find out they'd already been together, so ain't nothing to steal. Speaking <laughs> of that, yes, yeah, spoilers on episode three. They reveal that Misuzu and Junichiro did go on a few dates. They were, quote, boyfriend-girlfriend, quote. So... When they kind of left it as a cliffhanger on chap not episode two, I was thinking, whoa, they revealed this really fast. This was like a big reveal later on in the manga. Yeah. Because so much happened with Misuzu trying to help Tomo, and there was dates and interactions, and you just saw that animosity between Misuzu and Junichiro that you're like, what the heck? Do they, they really hate each other? Mm -hmm. And then there was that big reveal that they went out together, and it's like, what? 
But in the anime, on the cliffhanger in episode two, it was like, oh, well, that was just thrown out there. Yeah, and, and you know, that it's another area where I feel like the, the anime kind of robs the experience because you look at it and it's like, that could have been a season one cliffhanger ending. Yeah, that could have been. You know, like we could build, you know, towards him and her, but then we can also show that there's way more complexity and maybe something sinister with Misuzu, but they just give it away. Because the way it was built up in the manga was way better than the anime. I remember you making comments on episode two where you're saying there's a lot of tension between Misuzu and Junichiro and you're like wondering what happened. And I replied to you, oh, something happened, but you'll find out later. And we found out at the end of the <laughs> episode. episode. I was like thinking, ha, 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 you'll find out. And it happened like minutes later. I was like, well, <laughs> that took the thunder. <laughs> it, it, well, okay. So look, I, I I got a weird mind. So here's how it played out to me when I was like, "What's going to happen?" And then you're like, "Oh, you're going to find out later." And then we got to the end of the show where it's just thrown out there that they were dating, like so casually, and it was thrown out in a way that I feel like it expects you to be like hyper focused on the two of them and not what's being said, but what's being presented to you. Because like, it was like a scene, of, like somebody's going to confess. <laughs> and then when that was thrown out, you're like, wait, what? It was, that was the whole reaction in the anime. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, wait, what? And it was more like, she was wondering why Misuzu didn't share with her that she had a boyfriend. <laughs> More than what happened between Misuzu and Junichiro. Yeah. I think that's where it reveals that Tomo is not that narrow-minded. She probably did factor in that, okay, they're not together now. That means it just didn't work out. But Misuzu, why didn't you tell me you had a boyfriend? Yeah, that's... And not only that, but they also threw Carol in. Wasn't Carol introduced quite early? Yeah, like they just threw that in. So I'm like, wait, so you're going to present a quasi rival who's. You would think would have a standoff, not so much with Tomo, but with Misuzu, because it presented initially like they were going to have issues only to like pair them up by the end of the episode as friends and then have that throwaway line that Suzu and Janichiro had dated. Yeah, there was a lot thrown in that second episode, if I think about it, after talking about it now. Yeah, they're like, yeah, you know what? We, we got a couple of chapters. We got 12 episodes. We got to condense this. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited to see Carol. I wasn't sure when she was going to show up, and I was surprised that she showed up in episode two, but I was still happy to see her because she's presented to be an airhead. Not stupid airhead, but more like... It comes off like there's way more to her. Right, you're right. I'm... I'm having a hard time describing how she is presented because she has like this fluffy, innocent feel. But when you cross her, ooh. Oh, some things come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I like how she was introduced in the manga because she did, she was presented as a threat. She was that opposite of Tomo. She was smaller. She was way more feminine. She gave off that feel of come protect me. And when she started to hang around Junichiro so she could build up some fight against Tomo and then Tomo noticed them interacting and she was getting like a little paranoid, suspicious. She's like, what is going on? I was just thinking about like when they first introduced her 
and she first met Tomo, she was real bitchy to her. In a <laughs> nice, subtle, Carol way. What did she call her? Dumbbell? Yeah, she said, I, uh, yeah, it was Dumbbell. I was like, wow. She's like, Dumbbell. And she said it so nonchalant in her, hi, I'm Carol voice. Can you, can you impersonate that? I don't know our lines. <laughs> no, no, like, like, can you talk like her? Oh, gosh. How did she? It's... Junichiro, show us the video. Hi. No, Tomo. That's stupid. Say the line, dumbbell. Dumbbell. See, this is why you should be a voice actress. <laughs> <laughs> Get you right there in the book. You're already there. You're already giving your voice away. Might as well get paid for it. Ah. Yeah, listeners, start subscribing. So back to the story. And then, so, okay, Carol is introduced, and we have Tomo's senpai. What's his name? Kosuke? Kosuke, yeah. So they have their own little story, too. So I'm, like, wondering, okay, how is that going to fit? In the anime. And then we have this other character, Junichiro's friend, uh, Tatsumi, who has a crush on Misuzu. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, he gets some more scenes, but not a lot, but he gets some scenes and he's trying really hard to get with Misuzu. And Misuzu is like shutting him down. In her way, in her sadistic bitchy way mm -hmm. she's like mm -mm, no i'm over here like who's got the more creepy look misuzu or nagatoro <laughs> but i think it's misuzu because there's nothing but like evil vibes come off of her oh yeah yeah so i noticed in that anime that they kind of make her hair sort of disheveled with bits of strands like sticking out mm -hmm. and when I saw that, I was thinking, wait a minute, her hair wasn't always like that in the manga. And it seems her hair always looked like that whenever she's interacting with Tomo. She kind of looks like the stereotypical mom who's been <laughs> tired out by her child. <laughs> Me every day. <laughs> and so I'm wondering if this is a way to portray how much Misuzu watches out for Tomo. How she takes care of her. It definitely gives off the vibe of that's exactly what they're going to do. They're, they're doing with it because, yeah, I noticed that too upon watching it. And I was like, huh, the manga would sometimes show that, but not to the extent that you see, like, if you have a scene with Misuzu and Tomo, and then if it continues on, it gets worse and worse and worse. Mm. Like, you're seeing that in so many scenes, even if you go back and watch the first episode. You'll see it there. And I was like, that was not as prevalent in the manga at all. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> I was thinking that Tomo is a girl could be as good as Horimiya because when they show Carol's and Kosuke's story, that gave me Horimiya vibes when I was reading the manga. And you kind of get a backstory on Misuzu, and you get more backstory on Junichiro. Yeah. So with these backstories factored in, I'm wondering how much of it is going to fit. Yeah, I mean, that... I don't know if I would say it, it could rival Horimiya. I think if it could rival anything, I'm going to say Love is War. Yes, I would agree with that. It would not rival Horimiya, but it would kind of give the similar vibes with how there's more stories to each character. But it's not going to be as intriguing as Horimiya was. Because in Horimiya, they felt real. Like, a lot of stuff was relatable. While in Tomo-chan as a girl, not, not really. We know it's a comedy. We know it's fiction. But the other thing, too, that works in the benefit of someone as a girl versus Hori, uh, not Hori Mia, Love is War, Akage-sama, is 
in uh, Love is War, every time you felt you were making progress or the characters were making progress, they would reset it by the end of the season. Yeah, that was annoying. It was super annoying. That was really annoying. But I don't think we're going to get that with this. I mean, even if we were to go with Hori Mia as a comparison, um, even Hori Mia never did that. No, no. You saw the progress. Yeah. Like, in the manga, like I said before, we could see Tomo trying to put more effort on being feminine. Mm -hmm. So through her efforts, it was working. You were seeing Junichiro seeing her as a girl, getting more attracted to her as time went by. We could see that Tomo was succeeding little by little. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're just waiting in anticipation. You're like, okay, when is it gonna seal the deal? In the anime, like you said before, you kind of have a feeling that he likes her already. While in the manga, you were waiting for it. You were seeing the progression of him realizing his feelings. Yeah. Like, he was he was seeing her as a girl little by little. And it was conflicting him because he's like, oh, crap, I like her. I'm getting, I'm getting attracted to my friend. No, I'm not supposed to be attracted to my friend. But she's a girl, and she is attractive. Like, what do I do? You don't get that from the anime at all. Well, you do kind of. You kind of get that from the anime. But it's, I feel like the manga makes it feel like a payoff. It's a long-term goal. This is the payoff for you. We're going to walk you to it. Just hold on to it. Whereas like the anime is like, no, this is a rom-com. And that is the other difference, I feel like, between the manga and the anime. The anime spells out constantly, this is a rom-com. Whereas, like, if we go by the manga, the tone is different. It's slightly more serious. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't get the, it's this is a rom-com. You just get that she's struggling with her new, newly developed feelings and such for Junichiro. And he's oblivious. And it's the one, will they, won't they? Will she, won't he? But that that's what I got from the manga. The show, I love it. It's funny as hell. But it's still the whole... Yeah, this is a rom-com. But yeah. You know, I'm actually surprised you didn't mention anything about the voice acting. Because that was like one of the first things you told me about when... Wait for you to open that can of worms. What? You're always talking about the voice acting. You always initiate that topic. Okay, okay, so <laughs> when I first watched it, I watched it in Japanese, and I thought it was really good, especially with um, the type of character that Tomo is, you know, the tomboyish rogue. Um, I, the way the Japanese voice actress did it was she just made the voice slightly huskier. Like, it's still feminine, but it's got that, because, I, like, I work out husk. Mm, mm, mm. And, you know, and I, I've, I've seen, like, a lot of, like, women that are super muscular and tall and whatnot, and there's a slight husk to their voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which I was like, okay, I don't know if they're going to get this right in an anime. And then when I watched the first episode, I'm like... Oh, I can't really say what I really thought. But <laughs> basically, the gist of what I thought was that this is not the voice direction I would have went with Tomo. It, it didn't equate to what the Japanese voice actress did. When I heard Tomo in English, yeah, it was not what I expected. I was expecting, I want to say a higher pitch voice. I was, I was expecting those characters where they weren't the main characters. They just showed up in the middle of the season and they're that spunky, loud. Obnoxious? Yes, obnoxious and belligerent character. You know, the ones that usually have that fang tooth sticking out? 
Oh, yeah, because every time... Oh, the Snackletooth. Yeah. That's what I, I always call characters like that Snackletooth because they're always the ones that usually are doing something devious or wrong. But I've kind of noticed a trend with um, how they're presenting girls like this in manga. Uh-huh. They're not the troublemaker. They're just the awkward one. <laughs> it's like a giveaway because there's like another one that I, uh, re- I was reading uh something that someone is shy because there's a girl that's kind of like tomo oh the other um four panel manga that you were reading oh, I, what was the name of it oh i can't think of that oh whatever anyways i'm gonna look it up i hope they make that into a, an anime because you showed me that one that's really funny that's but funny. They are really similar, which is, I think you were reading that first before I even recommended Tomo-chan as a girl. Yeah. Because Tomo-chan was very similar to this female lead. She was tall. She looked older than her age. She was busty. And she was very athletic. She had RBF like a mother. (laughs) Her RBF, though, that was... And (laughs) is Okay. The funny thing is she does that because she struggles to see. <laughs> so she's make furring her face and giving RBF, looking like she's angry, but she's only doing it because she has bad eyesight. <laughs> so this should be a anime. Keep a lookout on that one. And yeah, did you I, find the title of that one yet? No, no, no. I, I need to do that. It's, that's I'm 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 like it's probably updated by now. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna Speaking look for that right now. Of updated, so when uh, I recommended Tomachan to Mikhail, it should have been done already, and Mikhail saw like 200 chapters, and then after the anime aired. Mikhail was telling me, oh, it says it's still ongoing. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, it should not still be ongoing. It ended. thousand chapters. Well, no, that could be wrong. But besides that, I think there's going to be more than one season of Tomo-chan. I'm thinking this episode, this next episode, is going to do more character background and then it's going to lead up to the parents and then after showing Tomo's parents then it's going to give more backstory on Junichiro and then we're going to end the season with the festival where Tomo and Junichiro went together and yes I am basing this off of the intro because usually it shows the scene throughout the season, right? Okay, so here's the thing. The name of that, that manga I'm reading, the main character's name is Hitomi. And her name is Tomo. So I was like, why is it? It's It's got a similar sound at some point. <laughs> so it's uh, Hitomi-chan is shy with strangers. Ah. So definitely read that. It is funny. And the, the the siblings to the two main characters. Oh, yeah. The main character's little sister. No, wait, they're, they're the same age. No, 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 no. So, so the male lead is older. The female lead is younger. The male lead's little sister, younger sister, is the same age as the female lead. It told me, yeah, yeah, yeah she is. And the female lead's older brother is like in college. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a lot older. I want to say the siblings are a combination of Misuzu and Carol fused together. Oh, that was also funny in this latest episode of Tomachan is a Girl because both Misuzu and Carol were working together. That was quick, too. I was thrown off by that. I was like, oh, wow, okay. They're like BFFs now. Yeah, they kind of have similar personalities, but they excuse different vibes yeah. it's like misuzu is a dark while carol is the light i mean they even present that in the thing where the, the angel the devil on the shoulder of so much was there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well and then karen's like 
Put your face in his face. Like, put your face in his face. I was like, what? What did Carol just say? What? Yeah. Do you know what that means? And yeah, she, she knows what that means. Yeah, yeah, totally. She's not dumb at all. No, she's not. And then in the manga, they showcase it with her backstory that it, she gets it from her mom. Which is not really a spoilers because there's a reason why I said that. And that was the mom's story. So you'll find that out later on. Hopefully within the season of the anime. That reminds me of the blonde chick in uh, Rent-A-Girlfriend. That the anime butchered. But the manga... Because remember, she was smart too, but she came off kind of ditzy. Are you talking about the ex-girlfriend? No. Because he never dated her. The blonde girl? Yeah. Blonde girl. But she's, she's the, she was the... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, they, okay. they made her off in the anime to be just stupid. Aww. Like, she's literally stupid, but in the manga, she's academically a genius. Socially. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was viewing her as. Because I was like, there's something dark about her. And then you see it, she's just an alternate multiverse version of Miss Susu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, overall, by episode three, it's still good. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the episodes of this season. Yeah, it should be really good. I mean, it... The only concern I really have is you've got. I looked at it, but it was about a thousand chapters. A thousand chapters? About a thousand chapters. <laughs> so you got about a thousand chapters. Um, and typical anime seasons now go 12 episodes. I'm worried this is only going to get one season. Very worried about that. Especially, I mean, I mean, I guess if, uh... Got total? Oh. Oh, oh, what? Oh, what? No, no, no. See, my train of thought just skipped over to something. I said rent a girlfriend, and I said the blonde chick, and you... I'm thinking domestic girlfriend. I knew you were thinking of domestic, domestic girlfriend, girlfriend when you did that motion with that tap, 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 Yeah, because I can't say. Like, uh, I thought that was that different story, but maybe I missed that in Rent a Girlfriend. Okay, domestic girlfriend. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it, it just hit me right then and there. I was like, yo. Yeah, I was talking about this. Anyway, um, if Rent a Girlfriend can keep going as long as it's going, and it's still far behind the manga, I think this should get the same treatment. Oh, really? This, I think, a thousand chapters, cut out filler, you condense the episodes, because this does it, similar to Nagatoro, it's two episodes in one, too many episodes mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, format. Mm -hmm. So you could condense a lot of the chapters, and I'm thinking they could probably do, I don't know, Five, six seasons? I would say four. They could do four seasons. Only four? I would say that because they were they were short chapters. Yes, they were. And then... I'm double checking my thousand chapter statement. <laughs> I don't need somebody being here like, um, actually, yeah, yeah shut up. <laughs> Fact check myself. <laughs> And, man, it was so long ago since I last read Tomo. I don't even remember what number that last chapter was. I just knew that. I was like, yep, this is the end. We're good. Yeah. Show me what their kids look like. So many manga do that. Like, don't show me... Don't show me what they the kids gonna look like. <laughs> Allow me to still ship who I want to ship. Oh, really? Yes. Seeing the children ruins your fan. Oh, there's another one you told me to read. Fan shipping. Uh, Watakoi, love is hard for Taku. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to read that too. Yeah, because you that was another rom com suggestion. Yeah, see, I'm still, I'm, I'm back checking. So if there's any rom-coms that 
you really liked and recommend to either read or watch the anime, let us know. If this is YouTube, let us know in the comments. If this is on any other platform and there's no comments. 154 chapters. You can... Uh, uh, tag us in any social media at like Lihua Superfina or Mikhail Casanova. How many chapters was that again? 953. 953. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I keep saying 200? Oh, yeah. You do keep saying that, though. I did. I correct myself. Fact, now, she fact checked herself. Check. Yes, uh, uh, moral of this whole story is every time you tell me to read or watch something, I should do it. Yep, yep. She mm -hmm. knows her stuff, people. I read a lot of manga. Yeah, she does. She reads when she's sleeping, when she's eating, when she's sitting, when she's pooping. When I'm pooping. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. I imagine you saying that as Carol. When I'm pooping. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm pooping. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> I enjoy talking about Tomo chan is a girl. If you all who are listening want to share your thoughts on Tomo chan is a girl, please let us know either in the comments or or on social media. You can find me on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. What else other platform? You still on Snapchat? Oh, no, no, no. I I don't even remember my handle name from that one. At Lihua Superfina. <laughs> <laughs> Let's segue out of it. That was funny. Um, yeah. Please, yeah. Okay, so the only thing, this is complete sidebar, but the only reason people use Snapchat right now is to promote OnlyFans. The amount of like this is why I ended up deleting the app off anyway, because like oh every, finally, oh well, there's a behind the scenes story for another time. Anyways, I kept getting notifications like oh this person uh left you a message and I kept looking at it, I was like oh I don't know that chick and it's always a woman because it looks at what your profile is and it gives you the opposite sometimes the same but like I was getting. Message after message after message. I'm like, I don't know who these people. And that's like, it's annoying. And just swipe up to go to my own fans. I give you a special discount. No, you don't. You're, you're that type of price all the time. There's no coupon. I can't go on Groupon and get a discount. <laughs> just, you know, don't, don't make me feel special. Time is limited. Anyways. So, yeah. This whole rant was about, like, do you have Snapchat? And I went into that. Anyways, hi, people. <laughs> Hi, so you can find me, Miguel Casanova, on all social media platforms. Uh, I'm on Snapchat too, but I'm not active on it, so don't message me there. <laughs> but you can catch me everywhere else. If there's a social media platform, I'm probably on it. Anyways, that's, that's all I gotta say. Thank you guys for listening to Podcast Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lihilo Superfina. And I'm your co-host, Miguel Casanova. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Haters. <laughs>